Hi guys, this is Otaku Gunso, and today I'm here to talk about Dr. Slum, which, take a look, oh, 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 yes, now you probably remember this, because I mentioned it in my Ultimate License Announcement video, where I said this was actually one of the series that I would have wanted to see licensed. Of course, little did I actually realize, obviously it is licensed, being the fact that you can get it from Discotech, Write Stuff, or Amazon which I actually got my copy from Amazon because they had the best deal kind of going and stuff. So, uh, yeah, they got five movies on here on two DVDs. And, uh, yeah, for those of you guys who like Dr. Slump, if you haven't snatched this up already, then definitely go get your copy. And for those of you who don't know that much about Dr. Slump, I'm just going to say, the same dude who created this created Dragon Ball Z. So all you Dragon Ball Z lovers, go get this. Go do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, funny thing about Dr. Slump, um, I actually got into Dr. Slump in the same type of way that I got into Coach Kame. Obviously, compliments of J-Stars and that like. And um, unlike Coach Kame, which I've been watching for almost a year, Dr. Slump I've only been watching for about, I'm going to say a month and a half. <laughs> now, after seeing a few episodes, I obviously see where it's pretty funny and entertaining and stuff like that. Like, it is a kid show, like, I am going to say that. So a lot of the humor is kind of um, immature, like, I guess you could say. But um, it's got, like, that gag humor type thing, you know, like, kind of like Bobo -bo or something. So, uh, yeah, if you like to laugh, if you like random stuff and, you know, like, a few pop culture references and stuff, then definitely check out Dr. Slump. <laughs> now, as far as the movie goes, <laughs> there, like I said, five movies on this, so I don't know how long this is going to take me, and this might end up being a two-part video. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to hop into everything right now with first movie on here, Hello, Wonderland. <laughs> now, this movie in a nutshell is basically like <laughs> Senbei, and Arale and Gachan go to Wonder Island. Or Wonderland. To find a special ingredient to add to a love potion that Senbei wants to make and then give to Miss Yamabuki, aka Arale's teacher, like Arale and them's teacher. That way that they can fall in love and get married and all this other type of stuff. Because obviously, like, he's madly in love with her and stuff like that. And I guess she's either out to lunch or she doesn't really like him like that. <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of the point, like, right off the bat. And it was funny, too, because, like, in the beginning, they had, like, the power struggle between, like, the two pop culture references. Like, you had um, Parzin, King of the Jungle and Superman, Hero of Justice. <laughs> now, I'm sure you don't have to go very far to find out who those two are parodying. <laughs> but, um, anyway, the clock comes in, stops the both of them, is like, hey, it's like, no, 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 you guys gotta sit down now. This is Arale's thing right now. Arale's the main character. So then they fast forward to the point in which they're going to the island, and uh, you got Arle and Gachan and Senbei, and they're like all in the little ship thingy that he made with wings and it's like, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, Arle's like up there making faces and stuff. <laughs> you know, because like, the funny thing, like uh, when Senbei created her, like obviously he created, cre created her to have like emotions and stuff like that. But he created her without any fear, which... You know, she thinks a lot of stuff is funny and kind of thinks it's a game. And even when, like, you know, like a giant dragon is, like, right in front of her and says, like, yeah, I'm going to eat you guys and I'm going to roast you up like shish kebab, you know, and eat you for dinner, you know, and it's like a fire-breathing dragon and all this other type of stuff. And she's pretty much like, oh, let's play tag or better yet, let's play pro wrestling. <laughs> You know, and she pretty much is able to, like, lift the dragon up and, like, throw it into non-existence. And when I say, like, throw it into non-existence, I mean, like, throw it into, like, like, it's not even in the picture. It's, like, 
probably like an outer space or something like that. She just like threw that crap totally out of the picture. So yeah, she is super strong and can run really fast and all that other type of stuff, but she's just kind of aloof. <laughs> and that's kind of what makes a lot of stuff funny and whatnot. And of course, Wonder Island. Now, you know an island is going to be a wonder when you're coming up on the island from the top and you look down at the island and you see that the island is shaped like a question mark. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be an adventure in and of itself. <laughs> and of course, you got weird things, dragons, character counterparts, and pretty much an entire adventure ahead of you. And like I said, Things do get funny. Like, they get funny. I mean, they start off funny, but they do get funny because Sanbei's luck is kind of like, let's just say his luck is kind of bad like Ryotsu's luck. So things don't happen, like, as he wants them to as far as, like, it working out and stuff. <laughs> and that's what makes things very, very funny, especially towards the end. But, of course... You're going to have to watch the actual movie instead of taking my word for it. You're going to have to see where they get that special ingredient from. You're going to have to see what happens at the end. Because I'm not going to spoil it, folks. Because then you won't want to see it, huh? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Next up, The Space Adventure. Now, The Space Adventure was a very interesting movie. And it starts off, like, really strong. Like, you have all this stuff going on. You have, like, you know, like, lasers destroying, like, this and that. And then you have, like, um, like, uh, robot things shaped like giant spiders. Like, it's pretty much, like, just boom in your face, literally. Then they go back to Earth. <laughs> and apparently it's summer vacation in the uh, and them school. Or not summer vacation, but like the end of the first semester, which, like I said, I don't know how Japanese school rolls, basically. So, you know, I can't really say too much about that. But um, the teacher, uh, Miss Yamabuki, she gives out the report cards and then she proceeds to give like each student a gift. <laughs> like, I guess it's, you know, like a going away gift, because at that point she knew that she was going to have to quit. And that kind of sucks for everybody because, you know, they love her as a teacher. She's like their favorite teacher and stuff. And she really likes to do it. So she's sad, too. And she's crying and all this other type of stuff. And, you know, she said that she had to return to the countryside. Now, later on, we find out that no countryside, please. She's actually from another planet. But not like from another planet. But what happened was... She went to an amusement park when she was a small child with her original parents, like her birth parents, and she got separated from them, and then she went in a spaceship, which in turn was a real spaceship, which in turn launched her up into outer space and took her to this island where these other people were there, and they kind of like played her pseudo-parents for a little while, you know, and raised her, and then they eventually helped her find her um, birth parents and stuff. And she was really grateful to them. And she said, you know, like, hey, the thing that happens, like, I want to repay the favor. Like, I want to help you guys out, too, and stuff. So she finds out that her mom fell ill. And, of course, she, you know, kind of, like, rose to the occasion. And she says, like, you know, like, hey, I got to go back. You know, like, my mom's ill, like, blah, blah, blah. So then she goes back and she gets there and things are not as they seem. As a matter of fact, Senbei was so depressed about it that he was just like carrying on and moaning on and on and on and on and on about it for quite a while. But he did eventually develop the emotional and mental strength to get himself together and then make a ship to go out there to kind of see what's up and stuff. Now, at this point, you find out that the whole thing was a ruse, that her mom wasn't ill at all that they're actually pretty much doing just fine, but that the world or the planet is not a safe planet and that there's chaos going on and you've got, like, this crazy, eccentric, 
pseudo visual K dude who does not accept no as an answer because he's really spoiled and kind of a mama's boy. And, um, apparently he's in love with Miss Yamabuki, too. So, like I said, um, someday he's busting out with that ship, you know? And then Arle comes along and Gachan, and then Arle's friends come along and everything. And it's pretty much just, like, a full-blown adventure at that point. Like... <laughs> You know, they just like all over the place and stuff like that. Of course, Senbei made the greatest mistake of not putting a bathroom in the spaceship. So there are many pit stops along the way, but many fun pit stops along the way. And remember now, Arle is a robot girl, so she don't need to go to the bathroom. But the other human people, they got to go to the bathroom. So, you know, yeah. And like I said, as for pseudo visual K, okay, I'm just gonna call him Lumpy. <laughs> he serenades Miss Yamabuki. He actually serenades her. And the song is like so catchy that like you're almost like, you know, dancing around to it. Funny, I actually found that song on the internet by accident. <laughs> well, not by accident, but it just kind of happened. But, um, you know, it ended up really being a funny thing. Like, you know, when they got there and, like, all this other type of stuff, like I said, pit stops and all. And, you know, the moral of the story is don't make our favorite teacher cry, man. Don't do it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to let you guys you know, check that one out, and uh, obviously this is going on for a long time and stuff like that, so I'm just going to kind of stop right here and then turn this into a part two, talk about the other three, like, another time, whatever, but, uh, yeah, very fun stuff, and once again, pick up Dr. Slum, the five movies on here on the two DVDs, <laughs> when you can, and tell me what you think. Maybe you can do, like, a nutshell type thing a lot faster than I can because, you know, I don't know, I want to kind of get into the nitty-gritty, but without totally spoiling it. So, yeah. Till next time, folks. With part two, anyway. Later.